Welcome to Pay One's Note. Today, I have such a pleasure to introduce a faculty of ours from Yale, and he's a world-renowned clinist, David Schiffen. Mr. Schiffen, welcome to Taiwan. Thank you. <laughs> so glad to see you in Taipei. Well, it's nice to see you again after so many years. After so many years, yeah. Um, how many times have you been uh, performing in Taipei? Taiwan? Three times, I believe. Maybe uh -huh. four. A couple of times with orchestra and mm -hmm. a recital. and. And now with this wonderful group of musicians I playing tango music. I can't wait um, because I love Piazzolla. But I think I remember you. I'm, I'm working a long time in the National Symphony Orchestra in Taipei. Uh, they're playing concerto with us, right? I Me did. I ago. did quite a few years ago. As it's amazing that the level of playing here. The orchestras are very, very good and oh, one of the best you. concert halls anywhere. Oh, yeah. Uh, how do you like our Taipei National Concert Hall? No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so beautiful. It, it's such an astounding uh, work of architecture, and the acoustics are wonderful. I, I was really struck by how easy it was to play in a, a duo recital when I played with, with Hong Kwan Chen mm -hmm. in the same hall that, that w I played with the National Symphony, and it's so easy to hear and it's such a wonderful big. quality of uh -huh. sound. Mm -hmm. So that even in such a large hall, that the uh, intimacy of a recital is not lost. That's great, and and you being a very famous soloist, and you performing at Chamber Music Society in New York City, and I I was just looking at your YouTube last night. You performing with. Uh, um, David Finkels and playing <laughs> the Wuhan, the beautiful Brahms, the chamber music. Yeah, I've, en I've enjoyed playing with David in Wuhan mm -hmm. very much. And How many of course years have you been with the oh, Chamber Society? I've been playing with Chamber Music Society for oh, 24 years, 25 years. And I have a special relationship with Wuhan and David. Um, because I was the director there for 12 years and, and was very, very pleased when they were uh, engaged to, to take my place when I left so that I had some continuity and I, I'm still playing there and enjoy playing with both of them. And um, you've been a faculty in Yale School since 1987. Yes. This is a 26-year a relationship. <laughs> Could you tell us about the year? Teaching at mm -hmm. Yale I is, for me, uh, the, the perfect dream job because Why? the, the, lev the level of performing of the students is so high mm -hmm. that teaching is really, is really at a level where you can talk about music mm -hmm. and you can talk about how to apply the skills that students have on their instruments to interpreting music, not just about how to play the notes and how to make a sound and mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it it's really becomes part of music making teaching and you learn as a teacher as much as you teach mm -hmm. I, I Yale is the perfect place for that the size of the school mm -hmm. is small mm -hmm. and and the emphasis on chamber music is so strong that it, right, it, uh -huh. it's just it's just part of being a musician, being on that faculty and working with these, the wonderful students and the other faculty members, um, I can't think of any place I'd rather have as a home base for music making. This is, I, know, I know what you mean, that having in both <laughs> studying at Julia and Yale, but the last two years I spent in Yale, I, I just, I can't say it's more than wonderful, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all these wonderful teachers, my teacher Aldo Pariso. Of just course, you got to study with time. Mr. Pariso, <laughs> who is still there and has a wonderful go see studio. Him, knock on his door. I did, but he went away for the a vacation in July. We're gonna go. Well, I'll tell him that I saw you and you're looking well and speak well of him. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. We have to mention that you were awarded at every Fisher Prize in year two thousand and you are the only two wind instrument who awarded this special prize. Tell me about this. Oh, <laughs> that was 
that was a wonderful day when I, I received a phone call uh, telling me that I was going to get this prize oh. because you th there's no, you don't. <laughs> uh, I was I was home, but uh, the nice part about it is that you don't know that it's coming. It's just a nice surprise. It's not something <laughs> you can make an application for, That's right. and just a recognition that you've been making music and people have been listening. So I was very pleased about that. I I know I, I arrived early 80s, uh, so really like I'm, I was a kid. <laughs> but yeah. growing up in pre-college at Juilliard and college, all this time, your name is constantly being mentioned on the radio and performing in the Lincoln Center. It just, and then I went to Yale, the, you were the faculty. It just, I said, we have to um, interview Mr. Schiffer when he's in town, because I just started this show six months ago. <laughs> well, that's wonderful that you're doing that. that the, the internet and YouTube and, and all of the opportunities to uh, to really explore what's going on in, in the world in, in so many ways, but particularly mm -hmm. now with classical music, mm -hmm. is it's great that you're you're getting into that and, and exploiting the opportunities. Because I think um, oh, okay, one reason because friend from Drula and Yale and faculty like you or students, my c old classmates, they're always making Taiwan is a big stop performing in Taipei. And I thought, I think everybody would love to hear me chit chat with them because everybody see um, you guys walked out brilliant and performed beautifully, but they would like to know what you think and, and um, for, um, I think, maybe, well, what do you think about students nowadays, you know? <laughs> it's oh, been, you've been teaching a lot. I'm, sh time. I'm sure that many people would say the same thing that the, the level of perform of performers, uh, the abilities just keeps getting better and better, and the challenge is to keep the opportunities coming for such talented young players, and to keep growing the audience and the appreciation for the music that we play. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's wonderful to come to Taiwan oh. and play for audiences who really care about the music and her. We're happy to have you here. Do you want to tell the audience a little bit about the concert tomorrow? The sure. Argentina letters. We're, well, we're playing music of Lalo Schifrin mm -hmm. and Astor Piazzolla. And Cho Liang Lin and I are both classically trained concert musicians. We play classical music and as well as contemporary music, and we're playing with four musicians who are completely uh, versed in the world of tango, who are great instrumentalists, but who are absolute experts in the performance practice of tango. Octavio Brunetti and Pablo Aslan and Satoshi Takaishi mm -hmm. and Hector del Curto <coughs> are as good as it gets uh, in tango. And to have the opportunity to perform with them in this amazing music of Lalo Schifrin and, and uh, Astor Piazzolla is, is a dream come true. We've played this, this program uh, a number of times in the US, and oh, this is the first uh -huh. time that we've gotten to play this music uh, outside of the U.S. and so oh. Taipei oh, so is our first played. international mm -hmm. concert for this group. You've done concert in the um, West Coast and at Lincoln East Center Coast. and in Dallas and Portland, San Diego. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh -huh. I think uh, audience is so lucky in Taiwan this time. I love Piazzolla. Yeah. <laughs> I love Mr. Schifrin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one question. Okay. Who's your favorite composer? Is it fair to ask? Well, you could tell That's me sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> My favorite composer is and has always been Mozart. Full of surprises, full of joy, full of great, great expression and introspection as well as ebullience. Just has all of the emotions and perfection of composition. Mozart for me has always been my number one. Wow. Not to mention Mm -hmm. that he was the first great composer to write for the clarinet. Wow, the how many concerto he wrote? Only one. one. Oh, it's a famous oh. one. Only one. 
Okay. Out of Africa. But he was his, yes, people know it from the <laughs> film. The movie. It, 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 it was his last concerto for oh any really? instrument, and his last completed work was his clarinet concerto. Mm -hmm. But of course, he wrote lots and lots of great music for the clarinet, chamber music, wind serenades, the quintet with strings, the trio with piano and viola, um, many great parts in his operas and symphonies, mm -hmm. solo parts, in, in, in especially his late operas, uh, like in Clemenza di Tito, he wrote extended mm -hmm. obbligato parts for the clarinet. So mm -hmm. Mozart uh, was uh, the most important composer for the clarinet because he was the first composer to really recognize its His capabilities. Since you mentioned Mozart, and but is it fair to ask you the new favorite repertoire of the whole clarinet? <laughs> yes, as once again, it's his clarinet concerto. Yeah. Mozart's oh. clarinet concerto is as good as it gets, and mm -hmm. I've probably played it hundreds of times, hundreds and times. never Rondo. and <laughs> never ever get tired of it. Always looking for new wonders. Every time you play, it's like yeah. a new piece to you. Wow, this is such a pleasure to have you with us, Thank and you. I'm looking forward to your performing tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. For being with Thanks us. for having Mr. me. Sherfin. Thank you.